Next question is from Luis. It says, I am 24 and I have a 250K net worth. Wow. wow. I know. First of all, wow. Shout out to you. That's great. Um, even if I didn't contribute further, I am projected to have 4 million by the time I'm 60. Is it okay to reduce my investment contribution from 25% to enjoy my life more today? Here's here's what I'd want to know, Luis. How how'd you get the two fifth? Was it Luis or Lewis? I wrote down both. It I thought it looked like the pronunciation Luis. Luis. If we're wrong, let us know. Uh, 24 years old, I'd want to know where that $250,000 came from. Is this because um, you're a high earner and you've made some really good decisions very early in life and you've socked it away? Was this an inheritance? Was that, you know, because the answer to those questions will affect that. Um, I gave this analogy a few weeks ago and I think it's, I think it's still pertinent. Can I do the marathon analogy? Oh, yeah. Is that right? All right. When you start out on a, on a marathon, and for those of you that heard this, I apologize. I'll go through it quickly. But when you start on a marathon, you take off, and your first mile is cranking. You're like, oh my goodness, I just ran a seven-minute mile. I'm crushing this. And then you hit that second mile, and you're like, holy cow, I hit seven minutes again. I'm averaging a seven-minute mile. Well, if I project this for the next 26 miles, I'm going to run this marathon in whatever 26 times seven is. I'm going to crush this thing. Well, we all know that when it comes, well, some of us know that when it comes to running, the way that you start the race does not necessarily dictate the way that you will continue to run the race or the way that you will finish the race. Because all of a sudden, some hills come. All of a sudden, you start getting hot. All of a sudden, your lungs start pumping, your pace starts slowing down. I would argue, Luis, that you are too early in your financial journey to make the foot off of the accelerator decision. So my answer would be, even though you know where you are today, and even though you know what the projection of where you could be in the future is, I do not know that I would recommend telling you to back off your savings. No different than I would tell a 14-year-old or a 15-year-old who goes to moneyguy.com slash resources, checks out our wealth multiplier, and says, holy cow, if I just start saving, I don't know the number, $13 a month, I'm projected to have millions by the time that I... So all I'm going to do is save $13 a month. I don't know that that would be prudent advice for that individual in the same way I don't know that that would be prudent advice given how early you are in your journey. Well, two things came to mind, and I love... This is how we I know we share a brain. As I, I had written down before you even told the marathon analogy is begin with the end in mind. Mm-hmm. Well, the problem is, is you're too young and you're, when you're 24 to know all the variables that are going to come to know where the end is. So that's why I will tell you, part of when I de- developed the financial order of operations is the reason we give the guidance of the 20 to 25% is because we're trying to give you not boundaries to limit how much you can spend. That is part of it. But it's also to give you a freedom to spend more. Mm-hmm. So, Because what I'm worried about is somebody, it, it, let's just say that this individual got their 250 because they make great income. I mean, booming income. They're crushing it in their 20s. That might mean if you can't, if you're trying to spend beyond 20, you know, 70, if you're trying to spend 75, 80, 85 percent of what you make, when you do get to retirement, if your lifestyle and consumption choices are so big, you might find that you're you're that margin call moment mm-hmm. where somebody's explaining their Ferrari, mm-hmm. the pro- kids in private school, the mansion in the Hamptons, and you're like, where does all my money go? Because you had you created such a lifestyle, it didn't matter that you were crushing it. It's just you didn't have enough discipline in there. But it also will keep you if you take a life inventory of knowing what you have going on. What I like about the 25 percent is that it's going to allow if you look if you're in your 20s and you go, man, I built up this 250 thousand dollars. But I feel like I didn't take a vacation for the last mm-hmm. two years. That's a problem. Yeah, go take so a vacation. So get the 25% in. They're being used the margin that's now not going into saving and investments to go expand your life. Mm-hmm. That's why I love it's not only a, a kind of buy-in, but it's also a freedom creator because it lets you know this is what I need to be saving so I don't let my lifestyle outrun where the goal ultimately will be when I get closer to retirement and I can fine tune, I can stress test and really see what my my final independence life looks like. You're just in your 20s, you don't know that. And that's why I told you guys, it's so funny when I look back at my my goals of life. When I was 16, I thought when I was 25, I'd go drop by a Corvette. <laughs> when I got to 25, I was like, I have no desire to have a Corvette right now. But it also, in the same day when I was in my early 20s, 
I thought I was saving like I was so I could retire at 50. Here I am at 50. Have no desire to retire whatsoever. I plan on if, if, the, if the Lord lets me do this for another 20, 30 years, I'm in. Amen. And that's the part that I think that, that your goals and your decisions will change. But if you can do it right when you have all the things lining up and all the goals and all your income and everything is working, this is when you can create margin to give you more flexibility because money is just a tool. It's just part of the journey. It's not actually the goal itself. So use it, but still don't miss your 20s. I don't want you to wake up when you're 38 years old and go, man, why didn't I go do this when I was 27? Or why didn't I go do this? That's why we try to give you the math, but also the balance of building the best life and that's what the rules and the financial order of our operations are designed to do. Here's what you do have, Luis. You got a head start. Right now, the game is yours to lose. You just have to make sure between now and the time that you get to the end of the journey, you don't lose the game. Kudos to you for being in an amazing spot at an amazingly early age. And for all of you 24-year-olds out there, even the ones that don't have a $250,000 net worth, because you have so much time, the game is still yours not to lose. All you got to do is do the things you know you're supposed to do, and the future looks bright if you have that much time ahead of you.